Hi, you guys. I'm totally in my downstairs basement. It looks like a basement. It's where our kids play. And then um, it's also like, it's just our like kids room play area. It's an Iowa basement. But anyways, my kids are upstairs <laughs> learning and, and um, being wonderful kids. And I thought I had a couple of minutes and I thought I would share with you uh, things that I do to keep my kids busy. Um, without watching a lot of TV or being on their Kindle or their iPad or their tablet um, or playing video games. Uh, to give you a backstory of why, of what I do, um, real quick. So uh, my husband and I decided when my first child was born 10 years ago that we would try to limit the use of video games and TV um, because there's so much more that we could do and we don't want their childhood to be um, like passed away or, or we don't want their childhood to go too fast by just watching video games and, and watching TV or playing video games and watching TV. So, so I kind of have made a conscious um, choice to find other ways to keep their time busy without me going crazy because I'm a, I, I'm a creative. I have to be busy and do stuff with my hands. So I thought, so this is like 10 years of experience along with the time that I've had at my daycare that I worked at when my, when I was supporting my husband through school. So I feel like I have a pretty good, um, footing on how to keep your kids busy without being like that helicopter parent. Cause I try to not be that helicopter parent. Um, I will say that my youngest son is, has apraxia, so he is technically a special needs child. So I do treat him a little bit differently, but that's because he learns differently. But he still learns. He still plays in all these good ways. And anyways, um, I had a couple of friends. The reason why I'm doing this video is because I've had a couple of friends that wanted, that are just really needing some extra help on how do I um yeah go through these times with my kids in my house and we can't go anywhere we can't do anything and it's going to drive me crazy and I was talking to my husband yesterday I said you know when I get to that midsummer like break where I like need a break from my kids because it's midsummer and my kids are probably driving me a little bit crazy I said yeah I'm there and it's not even summertime <laughs> it's April 20th and I'm it's going to be a long summer. Um, but I also have realized that I have so many tools in my back pocket that we will get through this together. And I hope that this will help you. So I have, I have probably 50 different things that I do. So what I, what I've done for my kids is I've taken this simple mason jar. Um, it's a wide mouth because I want to be able to put a lot of um, these sticks I've made these sticks and I'll go through some of them or most of them. Um, and, but I want to be able to put them all in here. And then when it's full, I, and their mom, what do I do? I go, I don't know. Why don't you pick a stick out of this jar and find something to do? Um, and I'm constantly upgrading it and throwing away sticks that maybe didn't work or they're just over it. So I don't want to, you know, we did that fun. Great you know, whatever. And then we have those tried and true ones where we use them all the time. So um, let's start with outside. It's finally spring and my kids are loving it. Um, and so outside and playing with um, just doing fun things. Um, one of the, one of the, uh, we have a trampoline. We like to use a lot. We like to use a trampoline for lots of things like hopscotch. You can hopscotch on the trampoline. Um, you can also do um, a lot of, uh, the other one thing that I like to do outside is shoot Nerf guns at a, ner at a, at a paper cup tower. So you, you put the <laughs> cups <laughs> as a pyramid and then you shoot Nerf guns at them. And my kids, my boys, oh my gosh, they, can spend hours doing that. It's it's a fun time. Um, some of the other fun things that I like to do outside that just makes life a little bit different is looking at magazines or cookbooks or um, look and find books are good. You can find look and find you can find look and find books usually at garage sales or 
oh my gosh, everywhere. They're everywhere if you look. Uh, but those look and find books are fun to, it's not so much reading, but it's using um, other visual skills to, to use. And it's always fun to read outside. So I, I'm always trying to get them to go outside, play outside. <laughs> I'll be inside or outside drawing or painting while you play outside. Um, of course, looking at magazines, I always collect magazines from garage sales or I'll ask teachers if they had some extra magazines, um, <clears throat> usually at the end of summer or um, wherever. I also get magazines at like book sales um, and those really work out well. Uh, I do have a co I got a bunch of art ones that I wanted to share. And these are all ones that you can do you could do it once with your kids and then you can say, Hey, remember that thing? Do that again. Um, watercolor, just get out your watercolors and paint you guys. That's, and they always have fun with that. I also have liquid watercolors that they like to use and, um, it's fun. These are totally in just random orders, but, um, marshmallow with, um, toothpick sculptures. You could also cut up apples, but I don't have the patience to cut up little dice apples to make a sculpture. So they do marshmallows, um, create a sticker collage. We find stickers all the time in books or like those kid books that have like, I don't know, then they have stickers at the back of them. And then also, oh, scrapbook stores or craft stores will always have fun stickers. I like the ones that have um, almost like, it usually has a scene with it. So Penny Black, I think used to have stickers like that, but usually you have like grass and flowers or birds or something and you can make a collage out of that or just do a sticker collage with their favorite characters. Uh, a glue drawing and rubbing. So you take like construction paper, you take some Elmer's glue, you make a, I don't know, a, any kind of symbol, a tree, a flower, it could be swiggles or whatever. You let that dry and then you can take paper over it and then rub it like a rubbing, like a leaf rubbing or, or a gray rubbing, whatever. Um, those are fun. Those are really fun to play with and to, to try. Um, and if you want it to be thicker than the glue, you can add salt to it to give it some extra texture when the glue is wet. Um, that's always fun. That's a fun one. Uh, draw your favorite animal that can, that's a great boredom buster. If you're just like, you guys need to do something. Why don't you draw your favorite animal? What's your favorite animal this week? I, my kids animals change every week. Um, Q-tip painting, take some tempera paint or watercolor and have them paint with Q-tips. I mean, I, I know of artists that paint with their fingers. So what's the difference between fingers and Q-tips then? nothing, right? Um, make a book from magazines. So those old, <laughs> those old uh, magazines that you find, um, cut them up and make a book out of them and then let them write the story. And that, that helps with writing too. And that your teachers will be grateful for that. Um, paint with leaves and flowers. So you take leaves and you paint them. I love to watercolor stamp with leaves. It just, it's really pretty and fun and um, what fun, it's a fun way to, to spend the afternoon. Uh, I have create with shaving cream. Yes, get that shaving cream out, get the table clean. If you need to get a cookie pan so the shaving cream doesn't go everywhere and just put a little bit on and let them draw with it, do shapes. I know it sounds very preschool-like and it is, but Oh my gosh, my <laughs> my 11 year old still has a lot of fun playing with shaving cream. You could also do the same thing with your patio door. If your windows need washed, um, put a little bit of shaving cream on the window and rub it around and then let them draw. And then when they're done, you just wipe it off and you got a clean window. So that one's kind of fun. We've done that a couple of times. And then your house smells good because it smells like shaving cream. <laughs> um. I like to paint with a song to warm up. So why not let the kids paint to a song? And it could be anything from a classical music. I would say keep the song to less than five minutes because if you do it any longer, they're going to um, lose interest. You could also do that by teaching them songs. So if you're um, wanting them to learn like our national anthem, you could 
find a good one of your favorite renditions of that song or um, maybe it's a Broadway musical that you love and you want to kind of add more depth to that um, and then you can frame it it's really pretty it doesn't have to be a masterpiece a lot of times my paintings are very loose and it's just very abstract but it has a lot more meaning to it and it's just beautiful so um I like paint to a song. That's one of my favorites. And I've had multiple, multiple artists um, do that as a warm up exercise. So it's, it's an art thing, but it, it does. It's really fun. Um, this one is trace uh, trees on paper or trace shapes on paper. So, um, you know, and I don't think you can ever go wrong with that. Even if you're a middle schooler or a high schooler, um, you, shapes can get more complex and you can never um, have enough practice in drawing shapes. And I truly believe that. Um, so this is scribble art and scribble art is basically you take a piece of paper and lately I've been taking a black Sharpie and I'll just scribble all over the paper and then I will color in those shapes. So you don't want to swivel it like really tightly, but loosely around and then color it in and see if you can't make a body or a face or something out of it. And if not, that's okay. It's just meant to be fun. And what I like about scribble art is that I usually take about five colors and those five colors have to, um, work together. So I don't want like a blue and a green next to each other all the time. I want it to look more, um, like a pattern. I hope that makes sense. Uh, another one is paint your mood. So you got paint your song, but paint your mood and then talk about it afterwards. And I think that's a great art therapy one to do, especially if um, tensions are high for whatever reason. Uh, you could say, okay, we're going to paint or draw your mood. I would definitely use, if you're going to draw, use colored pencils, um, but paint your mood. Um, and if your mood is sad that you need to be brightened up and flowers brighten you up, then paint flowers. I mean, it, it's totally open-ended and super fun. Um, paint blowing with a straw. So I take a blob of usually a watercolor, but it could also be tempera paint. And I take a straw and I just, the blob of whatever paint is on your paper. And then I just take a straw and blow through the straw and then the paint will move however you want. And then I've seen people make little um, like monsters or critters out of them. I've seen them become like flowers. So the blob is the bloom. And then you have the um, like the, the, the line that you blew across the paint as your stem. You'd also make those into trees. Uh, so lots of fun ways to, to bring art, simple art to your family. And we have so much fun with art. So I hopefully these will be good ones. And I think once you do them once, your kids don't need your help. You say, oh, it's, you know, whatever. Um, it's it's time to, to create blob animals or blob flowers. And then they'll know, oh, yeah, that get the straw out and do that. So um, make a collage out of magazines, stickers, whatever you have, stamps. I like to make um, my kids will use collages. We'll make collages out of stamps and and paint and it's, it's just a fun time to pass some time because what else are we gonna do, right? Um, make a collage with pom-poms. Hot glue is a good choice to um, keep your pom-poms on the paper. Um, usually what I like to do with pom-poms is um, not actually glue them to the paper, but I like to take a clothes pin and um, paint with the pom-pom. But, or the other thing that I like to do is not actually glue them down, but say here, we have a bag of multicolored um, sizes and colors of pom-poms. And I just say, okay, make a little um, motif, like a, a, a shape or object, and um, then we'll take a picture of it and then put the pom-poms back in the bag for a different use. Or a lot of times I'll use pom-poms for like sorting or counting and, um, it, it, it keeps them busy and I don't necessarily have to be right over them <laughs> helping them uh, make a necklace. We have foam beads and plastic beads and beads that we've made out of clay and they'll just make necklaces and 
send them away and send them to friends. And it's it's a fun way to to be creative in that way. Uh, face painting. So Snazaru um, on Amazon, there's a company called Snazaru, and they have little like face paint and then you can get stencils and they can the stencils are like a little bit sticky so you can put them on your hand or your face and so I say okay put your stencil on and then put you know rub your face paint on and then um and they can do that I don't have to necessarily do that now I wouldn't let my five or six year old do that to my 11 year old but I would let him do that on his hand if he wanted to um, so, you know, it's just fun. It's a fun way to keep <laughs> the spirits light and happy. Um, the, uh, this one is paint big and small. So I'll take a, like a little index card and then a big sheet of paper and I'll say, okay, draw a heart on each side. So the index card is going to be smaller. And then the bigger picture is going to be the, like the eight by 10 piece of paper, copy paper in half by 11 is going to be a big heart. And then, um, or I'll fold it in half and still do the index card with the copy paper. And I'll just say, okay, these are your five shapes. And then inside I'll say, okay, I want you to, you know, do hashing or um, stipple or whatever. And, and that keeps them busy for a while. <laughs> um, draw nature, get outside and draw nature. Um, I think the more you can draw and paint nature, the better you'll be. And the fun, it's fun. Um, my, my boys like to pick the leaves and then draw leaves, or you can even trace the leaves. If you don't want to draw them, you can just trace them. Uh, the point is to just let them explore and let them be curious. That's the whole point of art. That's the whole point of keeping them engaged is so that they can be curious and and hopefully be engaged in that activity. And then like when I say engaged in that activity, I'm thinking like 10, 15 minutes, but that 10, 15 minutes of them actually doing that is probably about an hour because they're taking their time, finding that perfect leaf and then finding another perfect leaf. And, um, and but the actual part of drawing would probably take about 10 minutes, but they still have fun. And it's not about the, the product, it's about the process, so. Um, anyways, um, color with markers, uh, simple and go get your, if you're bored, go get, go get your markers out. But I like it because it's in this jar and they don't know what is going to come from it. And so when they pick, they're like, Ooh, what did I get? Oh, I got colored with markers and I actually did pull that one out. But, um, so keep, keep this jar simple. So it's something that you as a mom or as a parent or as a guardian, you don't have to think about, oh my gosh, we have to do an art project and I have nothing. Like this is your art project jar. Just find, you know, these are all things that they can do. Um, I got three more for art. Uh, create with window markers. Window markers, you could also do dry erase markers if you wanted to. Um, test it before you <laughs> put it on your window. <laughs> um, they have a lot of fun with window markers. I don't know what it is about window markers. They're like, it's like a package of six, like Crayola makes a package of window markers and they're, it's like six bucks, but oh my gosh, my kids love them. Um, the next one is do print making. So get out your whisk or get out your sponges and let them paint on some paper. Um, that's always fun. I like that. And then our last real artsy one is blind contour drawings. And that's where you <laughs> sit across from somebody and you look at their face while you're drawing. So you're never looking at the paper and you're just looking at their face and you're drawing everything. And then at the end, and this takes like 30 seconds to do, like it's a quick drawing. It's not because you're, you can't see what, you know, the paper. Um, and that you keep, you take turns going around the table, um, doing it, drawing each other without actually looking. And some of the <laughs> drawings are like my favorite. I really want to get like a collage picture of all the different face drawings of my kids just to have as a piece of art in my house. But I haven't gotten to that point yet, but I think that would be a really fun piece of artwork to have. Um, now, so those are kind of the artsy, those are probably going to be the most mom I need your help with 
um, inside my jar, I also have clean your bathroom or clean bathrooms is really what it says. Um, clean your room and put your toys away. Um, and so if they get one of those, there's always toys to be put away. I don't care who you, <laughs> I don't care what, if you just cleaned your room, there's still toys to put away. Um, so the, the next group is more of things that you might have on hand and um, just playing, not within a different light, but just making it them. You're not, you're not making them own what they have, like play with what they have in a different light. Uh, so sing songs, sing some of your favorite family songs, um, or if you have some favorite, um, I said primary songs, church songs. Uh, play with plastic animals. You can get those. Um, you can get some plastic animals in a tube, and they usually come in like habitat form. So they'll have like all the lions or all the sea creatures or all the different animals. You can also get them in like, um, oh, I've seen them like from a caterpillar to a butterfly and the stages to that. And, and those are fun. And I, so when I say play with plastic animals, then, then I ask them, okay, well, have you made them a zoo? Have you helped them introduce other animals? Like I'm always asking them open-ended questions like, well, maybe they need a habitat. Maybe, you know, maybe they're, or maybe they're not in their habitat. And what would it be like if the shark was in the desert with all the lions? <laughs> Make it up, you know, it's all about using their imagination. Um, make your own music. However you as a parent want you want them to. Sometimes I say, yes, make your go, make your own music with sounds you can make outside. <laughs> and that's okay. I love, I love my kids and I love that they make music, but not when I'm trying to, um, you know, clean or cook supper, <laughs> which yeah. Anyways, um, play with puppets. We have puppets, but you can make sock puppets. Um, I, I think sometimes the, the silliest things are the best, right? You take an old sock and you could hot glue some eyeballs to the sock and then make a little mouth with a Sharpie or something. And that could be your puppet. It does not have to be um, elaborate. I did buy some puppets a long time ago um, and they still play with them. So puppets are a great way to use imagination. These are, these are all imaginative play things that, that kids just are drawn to. It's, it's a fun time for them. Uh, play dollhouse. If you have a dollhouse, great. If not, um, play house with your, with your siblings or with whatever. Now, if you are an only child, it might be a little bit trickier to play dollhouse, but um, you can play army men if you're a boy or you can play dolly house by yourself. If if needed, um, play dress up. That's always fun. I go to garage sales. I go to, after Halloween, I'll pick up some costumes along the way. And we have a whole trunk full of dress up clothes that they just love to play. And, and it's so fun to see them come up with ideas that I never would have thought. And you're like, yep, that is, that is what that is. <laughs> it's just fun. Um, I like to play, uh, another one is play restaurant. If you have play food or you can even create your food. We've um, created lots of different food for um, lots of different things. We've created um, food for American Girl dolls. Um, and there's a lot of good <laughs> ideas on, on YouTube for how to make your own American Girl doll food. Um, same thing with pizza party stuff. Um, Melissa and Doug, I always like to try and look for Melissa and Doug toys. They always have good like restaurant food type things or just have them use some paper plates and um, use pretend food, right? It doesn't have to be real food. It could be pretend food. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that they're just playing restaurant. They're using their imagination to play. Uh, have a dance party. However you like, I like to have different ones, Christmas for Christmas ones, um, rock, classic rock, pop, you know, just fun little dance parties that get some happy, um, play prince and princess. And, um, that's always fun. <laughs> um, play Melissa and Doug toys. Again, if I had, um, we have a bunch of like floor puzzles and, 
oh, other just Melissa and Doug toys that seem to bring out all their imagination. Uh, and then play with stuffed animals. Now, I was never a stuffed animal kid at home when I was a kid, but my kids love stuffed animals. And I think it's because I help them use their imagination. So just like the plastic animals, I'll say, okay, well, maybe you need to build them a house or a habitat, or maybe um, it's, you know, be Doc McStuffins and do um, checkups for your, for your pets. <laughs> or maybe um, you are helping them or whatever. It doesn't matter. Just play with your stuffed animals. Give them a little prompt. Well, maybe um, Tiggy needs a bath. You know, and but pretend bath, not a real bath. So, what you know, anyways, it's fun, it's a fun way. And then play farm. Um, my when my boys were they would still play farm, um, and they still do. You get tractors out, or you get your plastic animals out, and you play farm. And um, who knows, usually a catastrophe happens, um, when farm when we play farm. I don't quite understand why, but whatever. It's my boys' that imagination, not mine. Um, and then lastly, I have building a building section, and that's make a road with blocks. So who can make the longest road? Who can make the stablest road? Um, who can make the uh, the best bridge? Um, Play-Doh City. Play-Doh has a line out of like different construction cars and you can put the play-doh in and then the play-doh will make like beams and will make roads um and that's kind of fun you don't need that stuff you can just make a play-doh city out of play-doh and be just fine and that's what usually what we do um you build with blocks so either wood blocks or those um <laughs> you get those uh cardboard boxes and those are really fun to play with we used to have some and it did not survive our last mood move but that's okay um create with play-doh so it doesn't matter what kind of play-doh uh, just just play with play-doh see what you can get there's a lot of play-doh um sheets out and my kids my 11 year old because she's an artist at heart um she'll still play with play-doh and it's really fun um and then last but not least i mean some of these do seem like the repeats because my jar is now full right um and and so even if they go through five in a day which if we go through five in a day that either means a we have nothing better to do or they um they each took their own stick and did their own thing, which is fine. I, I don't want them to necessarily think they have to play with each other all the time, but normally if they get a good stick that they like, um, they'll all do it and they do have their favorites. <laughs> but anyways, um, I think the hardest part is just keeping them busy and um, fostering that creativity. If we can foster creativity in our kids, our days are much more lighthearted and the time goes by a lot faster. And I know that because um, my kids are usually happy and well-mannered um, and I have fun staying at home with them. So anyways, I hope this helps. If you have other ideas, I would love to hear them and we'll talk to you soon. Keep creating when they're creating. That's the key to our sanity, I think. So anyways, we'll see you later.